thought you had a beer. All right. I had a bad day. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for coming huh? over to my house. Hey, of thanks for having us. <laughs> we hang out all the time. I know you. You are right. Yeah. Um, all right. So, episode three of the CJJ podcast. Uh, we're here with Ryan Matthews. Uh, hey, man. Thanks for coming on. Six, uh, six year I'll big leaguer? No, that's, I wish. Uh, um, I think total of three, maybe a little over three, parts of five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. a good ride. So, you played for the Nationals for most of your career? Yes. Yes. I'll go over it. Drafted by the Rockies. Um, that's where Casey and I played. I'm sure we'll get to him at some point during this thing. No, definitely. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's where Casey and I, well, Casey and I played at Sac City also. But we were teammates in the minor leagues with the Rockies, and mm-hmm. then I got traded over af- right after I had Tommy John, actually. Three weeks after I had Tommy John, get traded to the Nationals. Um, and then I played with them most of my big league time. I was with them 2011, made my nice. debut. All of 12, most of 13, parts up and down in 14, and then got released after the 14 season. Um, went to spring training in 15 with the Angels, and then uh, I got called up with them. Funny story how I kind of got sent down with them. Um, roster stipulation, whatever. Pujols fouled the ball off his foot. Uh, didn't need to go on the go. DL for 15 days, so they needed to call somebody up, so they sent down a reliever. I went on waivers and got claimed by uh, Cincinnati. Spent the rest of the big league season with them. Oh, nice. Yeah, and then actually uh, independent ball in six or yeah, in the end of uh, sixteen when I got released. That's uh, right. We talked about that with the what ski what is it? Skeeters, Sugarland yeah. Skeeters. The only uh, championship ring I got in, in <laughs> any ball. My years. Hey, that's a, a ring's ball. a ring. Yeah. Right? yeah. So you played all levels. Yeah, all of them. Well, yeah, and that's also, it. Literally. Had some postseason experience too, right? The oh, Nationals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was that yeah. like? 2012, man, that was unreal. Um, probably the most memorable, memorable moment by far uh, that I had. You know, it was. I tell the story all the time. Um, it was kind of cool when I came in at game one. Um, I'll let you guys tee that up probably a little bit here. Yeah. Um, but coming in at game one in the postseason was unbelievable. Uh, you know, I got in a couple games. I think I got in game two, possibly game three. You guys are going to find out how bad my memory is. <laughs> you know, I'm honestly forgetting. Um, and then try to f- – awesome game four. Right. Uh, worth walk-off home run. One of the mm-hmm. most unbelievable moments I've ever seen. That's just crazy. Yeah. Electric. And then um, the f- script got flipped in game five. We blew a lead in the uh, in the ninth inning and ended up losing. So Crazy. Yeah. Ups was, and downs, huh? Unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable, man. I, I tell I I say all the time. It's like, you know, even playing pro ball for so long, you know, it's just kind of Groundhog's Day. You get up, you go to work. You know, it's like a job. It's a job. Um, the best job. Huh? Yeah, oh, it's the best job. <laughs> yeah, Don't get me wrong, no like, but it is a job. You know right, what I mean? Yeah. It gets routine. You kind of got to get in a routine. I feel like to be to be successful a lot of times with mm-hmm. a lot of it, and not let it you know play up to like oh I'm going to play a big league game, but man the playoffs. You, you're up and you want to go put your uniform at 8 o'clock again. Like, yeah, if so you get real. rained out, you're going to get sad. And you know, emotions like you are, are high, you're right? an eight year old kid, man. It was like, it was the biggest stage in baseball. Yeah, it was pretty, it, pretty unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. You've going back to what Luke said about you playing at all levels, but I mean, coming from me at least, Lucas too, I had time in junior college. Yeah. And then being a kid that did that and always wanted to go to the big leagues, what was it like for you to come out of like a small town, like Gulf California, exactly. right? And then yeah. go to a junior college and see yourself called in the, the Sacramento big league city, at. right? Sacramento City College, right? Yeah. So, you what know, was that like? Uh, man, it's, it's. I tell kids all the time, it doesn't really matter where you come from. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter where you go if, if you're a good player, right. they're gonna find you. You know what I mean? And coming out of high school, coming out of high school, I was drafted. But got one Division One scholarship offer. That's right. Uh, and I mean, where was that again? School, yeah. University of Pacific. Oh, oh UP. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So not Stockton. far from home. Not far from home. Right. Um, definitely not the type of student that was going to go to an institution like UOP. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, right. So I committed to University of Sac City College. Yeah. And <laughs> USC, baby. The quick two oh, yeah, step. Yeah, yeah. No, but well, I mean, which was a powerhouse up, in baseball, up, made oh, a name for itself. Man, just, I mean, I mean, the most, you know, right, which way just you the deepest be. tradition you could probably have at a junior college, you know. Uh, Somewhere you want to be as an athlete. Absolutely. I mean, it stuck with me my whole career. 
Right. Um, but going back to being from a small school, man, it was like, I kind of didn't know any better. You know what I mean? It mm-hmm. was like, I was just good, happy to play another year of ball. Right. Yeah. Um, when I got called for the draft out of high school, it was kind of surprising, you know. Right. There were some scouts around handing me flyers and whatnot. But, uh, you know, just kind of surprising. Uh, but then, you know, not to get a scholarship offer, it was like, I didn't know any better. Right. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll get a... Somebody wants you to come play ball. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 To, right. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Went to the... Uh, you know, I used to go to Sac City camps when I was young. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. yeah of course. Oh, yeah. Right? So, it was just fitting. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, yeah, we... Uh, so, we post a little teaser of this on Instagram and asked our followers if they had any questions for you and one was from Austin Chastain okay. and he yeah, wanted to know what your yeah. young Chip so young he's at Fresno State right now finishing up his he's last done, year yeah he's done with ball but uh, he had a question for you yeah I just wanted to know what your favorite memory from Sac City was yeah. man um, probably the funniest story that is kind of getting a little bit uh, getting a little bit of traction now is um, we showed up one time after a rain delay and I mean, Steve, you know, you were at Sac City. Yeah. Um, you, if it rains, you have field duty before the game. Right away. It was like yeah. a job, you know what I mean? You put on the boots. It was almost like a workout. Like, you just, I just did eight hours of manual labor. And, <laughs> Straight up. And now I got to play a game, mm-hmm. you know? And Juco. So we show up to the field after a huge rainstorm ready to play a game, and we pull the mound tarp off, and there's no pitching rubber. Good. What? Yeah. <laughs> So we're like, what's going on? And actually, like our, you know, our investigation skills, you know, our detective skills, we see these uh, mud tracks going over the right field fence, right? Over into the softball field at Sac City. Uh, Come to find out later on, like way later on, and now I've talked to him about it just through Twitter. Uh, Bomber mentioned something, pitching coach at Sac City mentioned something to him. But Dallas Braden played at AR. Right. And no. they came, and I think we might have even been playing them. I don't know my memory again, but we might have been playing them. They stole our pitching rubber. <laughs> they, moral of the story. So they came to so the storm. The rubber, just the rubber out of the thing. And if you've ever replaced one of these, like, yeah. oh, it's an absolute out, disaster. You gotta pack this thing full of clay. Yeah. You gotta, like, dig a hole. So they, like, had to do some work to get yeah. this thing oh out of there. Oh, my God. And it's funny. He, he was talking about it through Twitter one time. I think I posted a picture last year. I was out of the game, took a picture of the field. He's like, looks like you guys got that rubber back in just fine. No, and I, I think my comment was like, yeah, we got the mud prints off the right field wall, too. Yep. So, right, um, right. yeah, it'd be funny to get Dallas on here, who I grew up against going back to a small town. Yeah, became a good friend of yours. Yeah. Playing against him in, like, Little League All-Star. So, right. You know, and then I played against him at Sac City when he was at AR. That's crazy. Um, probably another memorable moment. Um, might have to use some foul language uh, when we get this. Lucas, can hit the edit button. But uh, it involves Dallas again. We're playing AR, and I'm, I'm pitching. And Dallas played center field when, uh, when, he, when he wasn't pitching. Really? So, I, I don't know, he was leading off the first inning. Or, I don't know, leading off. But I faced him in the first inning. And jam him. You know, he's, he grounds out the first. I'm covering first base, and I'm chirping at him. Like, you know, hey, Dallas, you should have stuck to pitching. Like, I'm going to chew you up all day. He doesn't say anything. Runs back to the dugout. Probably the third or fourth inning, I face him again. Same thing. He grounds out. He's running running to first base. I'm right behind him chirping. Same stuff. Like, dude, I'm going to chew you up all day like this and that. And he, he runs back, and he's like, Matthews, you say another fucking word, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and, dude, right there on the baseball field. And it was just kind of like I was taken back. I was like, that got okay. real. That got real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's another memorable moment. It's pretty funny. Uh, I mentioned that to him too, and he's like, "Man, I don't even remember that." <laughs> yeah. You know, Just so, two competitors. Yeah. Uh, dude, JUCO was fun, man. Yeah. It's, it's a different, it's a different breed of baseball out there, man. The people you meet, the coaches I had there. I mean, Andy McKay, Bomber. Yeah, you had some big Bomber names. Bomber was, I mean, Bomber was my pitching coach throughout yeah. throughout my career. Right. Like, I mean, yeah, I was at any any level, almost you know, once a week. Right. You know, anything I had, it was, I got to call Bomber to see if this mm-hmm. is okay. You know, yeah. help me out with this. I'm struggling. Just, you know, whatever. Throughout my entire career. So, it's a lifestyle um, relationship. Andy still, I talk to him all the time. Yeah. What I'm doing now, and he's huge. You know, he's in Pro Bowl now. Right. Huge in the development community, I think. Um, he's become a big name out yeah, there for people really looking to get stuff. better. And you they know, know his name now, yeah. Yeah, he's always been like that. And just, yeah. he was a big, big part of me just kind of growing up as a player and like, 
being okay with being myself out on the mound, you know, right. which I was kind of had my hair on fire at times. <laughs> yeah. A little bit obnoxious, I'm sure. Uh, but, you know, he was okay with that. And the first person to be like, hey, dude, if that's what, that's what you got to be to be good, yeah. you better go be that. Yeah. Or else you're not going to be any good. You know, you so, wanted you to win, yeah? Yeah, it was cool. Exactly. You know, so um, Sac City, man, yeah, Juco route was huge, yeah. instrumental in my career. Well, that, uh, that fiery personality came out definitely in our live ABs that you've uh, thrown. Yeah. We got some videos on there. And I think there's one that I think Bomber replied to on Twitter, and he was like, "Oh, this is the same same guy you were at Sac City. This is yeah. how you this is how you compete." Yeah, man. I mean, I don't think you turn it off. You know. Yeah. I definitely win. don't want those kids, you know, getting a hit off of me or anything like right. that. And I don't want them to think that you know it's easy on them. So I try to make those tough at bats when I'm doing it, man. That's, right. that's hopefully the toughest at bat they have all year, and yeah. it lets me get to compete. And it's fun. That's fun. Yeah, I have a good time oh. with that. I think, um, um, well, a qu yeah, well, a question going off that being, so how do you take that fire and all that time you spent on the field, and as time went on and you kind of stepped away from baseball competitively, I mean, you've got the shirt on, you know, we've, we're all together at the place, yeah. we've got optimum athletes now, right. so how have you taken that and transitioned kind of in this new role, what you're doing now? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's with the kids a lot of time, you know, right. like, um, I kind of like, you know, I try to just let them know with, with some intensity that, like, hey, if you're serious about this, mm. you, you better get serious about your work, you know. Wow. And, I mean, the, the amateur baseball world is so competitive now. Oh, yeah. And, I mean. It's crazy different now. It's crazy different, you mm. know. So these kids need to, need to know what it's like to train, be serious, um, you know, have good habits and be, you know, really, really be, like, attention to detail, mm -hmm. have good programs. Because if not, they're going to get passed up, and they're going to miss that window to develop. Right. So I try to just, uh, you know, relay that message with intensity. Mm -hmm. You know, like, hey, guys, there's no excuse for not, you know, you can't skip workouts. It's not yeah. like. And here's the tools. We, get, right. we have them for you, and you, you, know, you provided it. You exactly. Know. And I think a lot of that comes over, as not, not that I'm stern or strict. It's just I expect a lot of them. Mm -hmm. You right. know, and I think I'm intense with kind of how I relay that message to the kids a lot of times. Like, oh, no doubt. you know. Yeah. Expect a lot of yourself. Like, well, you've been so. at the highest level of baseball. You know what it right. takes. And I think somebody that's anywhere from, you know, 16 to even 23, 24, oh, yeah. they know that right. you've been there and they know the value that you can give being, hey, I've seen it, what they do, here's what I want you to yeah, do. Yeah, you know, and I just try yeah. to use that as, as uh, hey, man, this is, this is the way it's got to be. This is what yeah. you got to do. And, um, you know, hopefully they, they, they take that and know that I'm serious with it. You know, it's not just a suggestion. Right. It's like, if you want to be serious, and I've seen it, I mean, I've, I've been stern on some kids with like, hey, you know, th if this is how you are at the gym and a college coach calls me, I'm not going to make a liar of myself. Correct. And is this, you know, what you're doing right now? If you're skipping a rep or skipping a workout or your program isn't, you know, you don't complete this or that. And, you know, we find out you want me to relay that, that message to a college coach. Yeah. I'm definitely not going to put my name on that. You know, yeah. you know, Casey said it all the time. It's like, yeah, good kid. <laughs> Trains here. Yeah. Trains here. <laughs> right. You know? And they know exactly right away. I don't have to say anything bad. Yeah. But if I don't have anything good to say, so I, I think I try to, you know, just hold them accountable to that and hold that expectation to them. And I'm intense with that, you know? And I, it's our brand. It's our culture. Right. And, you know, w we take that serious. We put that over everything, as you guys know. Yeah. Being our first two, you know, right. two of our first employees. Not our first two, but... Um, kind of the yeah. yeah, Mike Laneville. Including Laneville's you know, in the room right now. He's, he's off the set. <laughs> he's got a live audience. He's put some. He's put some long hours <laughs> in the gym for us. Uh, They're sitting in right now. He just got done. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So we, you, you guys know darn well. I mean, I'm sure yeah. I, I'm that way with you guys sometimes with the expectations oh, of, yeah. you know, the culture we gotta we gotta put out there. So, um, right. I think if that answers your question, that's kind of like how I use oh, no, it now. No. You know. And it How definitely shows. It shows in our gym. Yeah. The brand we're going to build and things mm -hmm. like that. You got to relay those messages that they, it, it means something to you, you know. So when you're intense and you're passionate about something, I think it shows you care. Yeah. So, you know, if I'm that way with the kids, I think at the end of the day, they, you know, they know, hey, this guy cares. Oh, yeah, they'll reflect uh, that. They, you, get, you create a lot of buy-in like that. You know, totally. Yeah. Making a kid care, you, you create a lot of buy-in. <clears throat> yeah. Awesome. So, I mean, just going off that, for those that don't know, uh, we work at Optimum Athletes. Yeah, here we are. Uh, Sacramento, by the way. Right. Sacramento. Yeah. In Ryan already. started it with Casey Weathers and Jeff Marquez. Yes. Two yes. other Sac City boys. The right. founding fathers. Uh, yeah. yeah. So if you want to kind of talk about how that came up and 
Why did you decide to start a baseball team? I think it was because we all we all were done with our careers right at the same time. It's like we need a job. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna do now? <laughs> and it's like, well, what are we gonna do? What can we offer? And um, I mean, Jeff lived here. He was my roommate, it, and um, I, we talked about it. You know, kind of like we are right now. Yeah. You know, sitting here in the cow at on the couch in the kitchen. Um, it's like, hey, man, I think we got something here. We can offer this. We can do this. It was a lot of ideas at first. Right. And uh, I actually, you know, reached out to Casey. Mm-hmm. And just knowing that his vast knowledge of driveline. Right. And, you know, I'm sure we'll get to driveline as as we go on with this. But Of course. Um, just Casey kind of being one of the poster boys for driveline. Mm-hmm. And us being college teammates, minor league teammates, and him just kind of being done at the same time. I'm like, man, you gotta surround yourself with really good people. And uh, Casey did everything the right way as, you know, when I was his teammate and uh, super, super smart dude for, you know, as you guys know, yeah, one of the I smartest know. people I know. Um, and always passionate about what he did. So I'm like, hey, this is the guy I need in my corner. Okay. And um, obviously it paid off. You know, yeah, he's yeah. not here anymore. He's with the Reds, which yeah. I think that's amazing for us. You know, it looks great as, you know, a brand and an organization that mm-hmm. um, Major League Baseball would be after somebody, you know, that, yeah, that something we, gym, you know, right? we yeah. one of our founders. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, that's kind of how Casey and I went about just a lunch. Hey, let's do this. Oh, yeah. And, you know, Jeff and I being the crazy dreamers we are. <laughs> yeah, kind of dove right in head first. Huh? Heck yeah. Jeff's like, yeah. oh, man, dude, I mean, let's it's do been this. going well, you know, man. You guys yeah. know Jeff well. His yeah. passion for if uh, he's going to do anything, he's going to do it full blast. Oh, and yeah. He's going to care a lot about it. So. Even to small as building the website. Right. He was on that thing yeah. for you know, three or four weeks. You oh, catch bullpens. Every detail. You know, he catch, <laughs> he can catch exactly bullpens right. in full gear. You can see it on stage, He's big time. He's just big time. He is miss big time, man. But yeah, he's that, that big boy out in Texas now. It's so uh, cool yeah, to see, yeah. too. But yeah. FaceTime him earlier today. Yeah, he was FaceTime when we walked around the gym. and um, His aunt and his cousin are in there training and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So he's... He's, he's still around. <laughs> definitely still around. The home mark, but yeah, that's kind of how. Man, it wasn't anything serious at first, you know. Mm-hmm. I think we started with two brothers our first day, yeah. and we ran it like we had three, three former pro <laughs> guys yeah. working out with uh, two kids from golf. That client to training ratio. Exactly, yeah. it was the top notch, man. But that was uh, testing the waters. June, right? Yeah, that was 2018? June 2018. Exactly. And then come up on Steven. I think you went in like uh, two weeks or so before me, right? Yeah, because right at the end of the summer, we had talked to Casey at yeah, one of our throwing sessions. Right. Like, we used to throw at the park. Yeah, that's the park. kind of how this whole thing yeah. came about. Right, and, yeah. and, and I'm texting them. Yeah, he, like, I came over like right at the beginning of August. I think you were there a week or two beforehand. Mm-hmm. But when we were there, it was literally Polo. I think Ira Rogers Heinrichsen. came. Heinrichsen. Heinrichsen. Yeah, I think maybe my nephew and uh, my uh, cousin, Bobby. Yeah, Bobby. Bobby. Yeah. Yeah, but I it was think, you know we had a couple family members and uh, a couple kids from golf. It was crazy because you guys started rolling in, yeah, and sending your people yeah. from the park and things like that. Like mm-hmm. looking back on it, we I remember leaving like on a, a day and we'd all kind of talk like, "What time tomorrow?" Right. And yeah, like, Tiny, what, what time? What were you doing? Right. Okay, eleven. All right, we all show up at eleven. Right. You guys would follow us from warming up to outside to play catch. Like, yeah. yeah. And now we have. We north have a full of, system. We north of them, though. Hundred clients, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you put all the pro guys in there and the few youth kids we got, I mean, we're definitely north of a hundred. So it's and, come uh, a come a long way. Hopefully, in don't stop year and a half. Yeah, any, yeah. Anytime soon. But yeah, man, those days were cool. I mean, and I, I mean that seems like yesterday, and it almost was. You know, so, seriously. Blink of an um, eye, man. Yeah, it took off, and yeah. I, I mean, just this market, we got honestly, we we got a loyal, loyal client yeah. base. You know, the Sioux Sacks. They were huge in our growth, mm-hmm. just huge. Mm-hmm. Um, just a staple in the baseball community here in Sacramento. Mm-hmm. Um, Johnny, you know, Johnny was huge for us. In Jesuit High School, yeah. that whole mix. Right, just, he just, you know, has been around, always been, you know. His intensity is maxed out here. He's just right like there. you. Yeah, he's exactly, there. not afraid to talk to anybody. He's not he's crazy. He's something, he's going to tell everybody. So it was the best he idea believed, He believed in the three of us. And <laughs> yeah. You know, we got yeah. a lot, for a lot of our high school kids, we got to thank, you know, we need to thank him, you know. Yeah, Getting exactly. those guys in the gym, we, we have him to thank and, and the Susac family to thank for that. So they were huge in our yeah. in our growth as well. Some good but there's kids. been endless families now that, you know, the oh, yeah. great, we, I say it all the time, greatest compliment you could give us is sending somebody in here. Yeah. So, um, 
I mean, I'm sure you guys have felt it now when, you know, they tell you how good of a job it is and what right. you're doing or whatnot. Uh, that's a cool feeling. And the trust they have for us is just, you know, those yeah, kind of things you, you feel. It, you know? I think exactly what, kind of like what we were saying before, you show them you care, and, you know, show them that you're there for the right reasons. And right. You, the rest plays, the yeah. rest plays out. You know, so, it's been awesome. Yeah, the rest takes care of itself. Yeah. Um, well, I guess it's from sort of, not the outside, obviously I'm working for OA, but just kind of seeing your interaction with the trainees and all this other stuff. Like I've trained different facilities and there's obviously people care about the trainees, but I think just the level that you take it to as far as, yeah, obviously like you got to make money, it's a job, but at the end of the day, I think the number one thing you care about is the trainee yeah. and it shows in the way that like we operate as a business just because you mm -hmm. set that standard and it's crazy the way it kind of like ends up being successful as a business. Absolutely. Just because you're taking care of your trainees. Right. But yeah. You know, I mean, I try to get close with all the kids. Right. I try to like, um, you know, I try to have relationships with them. I try to find out who they are and, you know, w w what they want, you know. And, and a lot of times, I think as a coach, you got to do that, you know, because you got to speak so many different languages. Totally. And you got to find out what that, what that person, what that kid's language is. And if you don't know them, you're not going to be able to speak to them, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you don't take the time to know them, how, how are they going to? How are they going to respect what you're saying? And like, why are you telling me that? Like, what's your reason? Mm -hmm. You know? And I think when it comes down to like, hey, there's no reason other than this kid, care, this guy cares for me yeah. and wants to, you know, has my best interest in mind. And you can see it. You know, yeah. It's so, I mean, that's why I yeah. try to work hard on that, you know? And I think that's something I try to set forth. And, you know, I think it's just going to help everything and the community as a whole. Um, if these kids learn that, you know, maybe they'll pass it on. Right. You know, whenever I help somebody out or, or anything like that, I would always try to be like, man, don't thank me. Don't pay me back. Do it for someone else sometime, okay. you know. And I just think that hopefully it gets contagious and hopefully we get to, you know, impact a lot of kids like that, you know. So that's, Keep the, that's wave the biggest rolling. thing, man. I try to care about them, yeah. you know. It shows. Yeah, it definitely yep. shows. Um, so now that you transition from your baseball career to actually on the other side, coaching, training, owning a training facility, I guess it's not just what that what's that transition like, but what has been like the most rewarding for you, thing for you over the past two years, and what have you I guess just enjoyed about opening OA? Yeah, man, it's like um, honestly, there's a few things, but um, I mean, getting to be around you guys, like yeah. you guys coming out of school, mm. and you guys had a transition too, just like I did. You know right. what I mean? Like being student athletes, having somewhere to be at a certain time, and you know, you guys had something you were working for with that too. Being able to provide something, you know, valuable for you guys right when you were done. Oh yeah. I mean, it's huge. It's Just exactly what we to wanted, see, you know, Right. And to more. see you guys growing it and actually mm -hmm. take pride in it, it. And man, just being able to, to provide a service for people that, you know, they value and they want to show up for every day uh, is, I mean, I try to value my career like that. So, I mean, that's something I try to do with this, you know. Um, that's been great. You know, obviously the kids, you know, I think giving them a place and giving them, you know, somewhere they can come. Right. You guys see it every day. Oh, yeah. Kids are there for four hours, <laughs> oh, man. My God, they sit they on love the couch. And, yeah. You know, and it's not like they do it and they're messing around. No. They come in, they get to work, and then they go and they have their fun. They, you know, they tell stories. They go get food. They come back and eat. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the culture's kids from been different created, schools man. Yeah. and everything like that, man. It's just like... It's going to be so much fun in the next few years when we get more and more of a melting pot of these kids in here and just watching them all compete against each other and, right. you know, push each other. I mean, yeah. This year's going to be fun, too. And succeed. I mean, this yeah. year's going to be fun. Seeing the guys I mean, we take. Last year was fun. You know, just the short yeah. time we did have these yeah. kids um, going out and watching them compete. And, oh, yeah. I mean, the stories like Chris Baytosh and Kevin Haynes that, I mean, Chris Baytosh was... I mean, what, 70, mid-70s? Topped out at 78. I think it was 78. Topped out at 78. That's We're talking, this kid's going to hit 90 miles an hour and he's 200 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> he has it's had a complete transition. A whole yeah. new player, a whole new person. And and he's not the only himself. one. I mean, no, I don't want to just single hit. We got tons of guys like that that just work their tails off for something. Oh, yeah. And I think it's like, you know, it's contagious. And being able to provide that's that something. standard. Yeah, that scales, you know. I mean, you see it happen live right there with all a bunch of different athletes, like a domino effect down the chain, you know. Right. They all but, see it, and they got we got guys that just 
they're saying this tone, they're saying this tone. It's just cool yeah. to see, you know. And it's like, a culture. you know, it's, like I said, that scales, you know. Totally. They're going to take that with them, take that mentality with them, and they'll be successful in whatever they do. It might yeah, not yeah. even be It's basic. more than on the gym floor. It's going to exactly. be It's going to be out the door. Yeah, you know? they take that's it the out cool the door. thing. I think that's. And I've seen kids really change, man. Just like oh. change as kids, you know. Yeah. Get a little direction, you know, you believe in them and get, get make them believe in themselves. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's yeah. not even like. It's not even the advice we give them or anything like that. It's like, make them want them, uh, you know, put them in a place to enjoy <clears throat> seeing their accomplishments. Yeah. Like, in, seeing their end goal, you know, what they're working for. Make it realistic that they can't accomplish that. Nice. Just And then the drive they get and how they change in that. Like, a kid that comes in and doesn't really have, you know, does, doesn't really know how to work. Not by any fault of his own. Right. Just never been taught how, like, what this kind of work is. You might is be new to it, yeah. And then dive in, and now a workhorse. Right. Yeah. Knows what to do. Doesn't it. miss a rep, doesn't miss anything. And, and loves, genuinely loves the process right. like that. It's, you can't do anything more for the guy. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Unbelievable. People are going to see that, you know? Yeah, that's so rewarding. Um, that's probably one of my favorite things, too. I, one that sticks out to me, I started my baseball thing, but I remember uh, when Stevie P over there came back, uh, I think it was at the beginning of the summer. You're back for like a weekend or something, and he was on the couch, which, I mean, it was probably, I don't know, 50, 50 60 feet in from the door, and B-Suite came in and said, like, what's up to Steve from across the gym? Yeah. And he kind of, like, did, like, a double take. He's like, what? Like, he would have never done that six months ago. Right. He was right. just a exactly. quiet kid, and he just, like, grew into himself and yeah. got that confidence. And yeah. Yeah. He, it's been awesome to see that with just a bunch of different kids. Yeah, you see it with a lot of them. And it's, I think it's just the culture we breed, you know. It's us kind of connecting with those kids like that, and you know, it's just they give they build relationships there, and it's, it's just providing a place like that, a facility they can come, one get their work in, you know, two hopefully get better at something, and then build those relationships. It's really a cool thing. Right. <clears throat> I guess I got a question. It might be kind of loaded, but we kind of briefly talked about it today, <laughs> right? We talked about it. What is a uh, What's the end goal for Ryan Matthews? What is the move? Like, what do you, where do you see yourself going as far as Settling. the facility goes? I mean, anything, if it's even an idea, where do you want to be like, Man, for five years? I mean, I know it's tough to see. It is tough. It yeah. is tough. You know what I mean? Because I think it changes every day. Right. I think, um, you know, there's a lot of cool things. I, I mean, I hopefully have a couple places like this that we can, um, you know, we can just touch more people mm -hmm. we can get out there and you know expand to different areas and um, keep providing more jobs and you know more learning opportunities and coaching for young coaches like you guys you know right. just young mentors like you guys that can come and learn like um, you know if, if I don't know expand to two three four shops you right. know something that obviously you can keep quality control over um, stuff like that, but just expanding and making the baseball community better. Right. Um, I mean, out. I've never, as you know, this is probably the loaded part of it. Um, yeah. I've never, um, I've never counted out pro ball. You right. Know? I figure. Um, there's a lot of things that come with that. It's a complex, uh, it's a complex decision, but mm -hmm. um, it's not going to happen anytime soon. And, right. Uh, but it's definitely something that someday I might challenge myself with. I think there's a few things that line out, you know, insertion point and yeah. our insertion point and, uh, you know, kind of where I start and the role I'm in and no doubt. things like that. But I think I'm setting myself up for some of that right now. Oh, I totally um, think you're on the path. You know, yeah. because the more you can just load your gun and arm yourself with knowledge and continue to educate, you know, yourself and just continue to grow <clears throat> as this game is. I mean, you guys are learning, yeah. you know, with the driveline cert you guys are taking right now. And, right. Um, just you know I mean the people we've got to be around is just crazy yeah, I mean, yeah throughout yeah, the years you know, I mean, including is, you guys it's nuts this game is in an absolute great place right now you totally. know what I mean a lot of people knock it a lot of people uh, it's changed a lot <laughs> yeah it's changed least, a lot it's changed but a I lot, think yeah. man the way it's changing is giving new opportunities to people that would never have it before to be successful in this game yeah um, you know opening up just you don't have to be a baseball guy to be a baseball coach anymore not at all which that's huge you know, um, not everybody was is blessed with, you know, just gifted ability, but now they can yeah. just study and literally, if they know how to communicate with people, they can arm themselves with knowledge 
that it can impact a big league baseball. In a search player. bar. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's it's I, like, I think that's a cool thing. thing. Yeah, the, for the Why cell would you phone. ever knock that? You know what I mean? If I you can know. impact more players, yeah. and now we have more people impacting more players, how's that a bad thing? You yeah. Know? So, yeah. like, and don't get me wrong, there's people using, like, new tools, radar guns, you know, rap sodas, I'm sure. Yeah. And not really, you know, probably recklessly. Definitely right. plow balls. You or know, velocity or, belts. <laughs> All kinds of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, towel, towel drills. Towel drills. Things yeah. like that. Um, I don't knock core velocity belts totally. Yeah. Uh, they got time. They got a place. Yeah. And one thing, too, is like I, I say, hey, don't knock something you don't know anything about. Yeah. And I haven't really dove into those things, man. So how am I going to knock So them, much you know? to learn, man. You know? But yeah. I did throw some towel drills when I was coming back from Tommy John. I know how to make my elbow feel. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I know I knew Slam it didn't make me too. So why am yeah. I wasting reps doing this? Yeah. You know, so totally. <clears throat> that is something I know about. But um, yeah, where it's are just, we at? It's where expanding. <laughs> no, yeah, just how crazy. Uh, right? I mean, but I no, mean, it's so pro ball, man, it's not, it's not out of the question. You no, know, I mean, I mean, I just need a couple more live abs first. Yeah, a few more live abs, <laughs> maybe. Get uh, back out um, there. You know, maybe I, I don't know though. I feel like I'm touching so many more kids like this. You well, know? The val- I mean, the value that you provide is only going to propel you to. I think what I can. You, you know, do. I not that you can't help my. You know, getting minor leaguers to the big leagues, or you know, big leaguers to stay in the big leagues, or big leaguers to a championship, or being part of something like that. Coaching would be cool. Right. But for right now, I love I love being with these boys, man. I love being with the few pro guys that I do get to be with. Oh, yeah, um, we got a great group in there, too. Man, Can't count them out. Oh, they're so awesome. They get you know after I mean? it, man. And I guarantee you we're going to have some of these kids knock on the door of the big leagues that oh, I, are I guarantee you know, going to be great stories. We're talking Sam Long, um, Nick Mears, who's a minor league free agent. I mean, two Sacramento kids, big arms. Yeah. Big and time arms. I mean, yeah. just having guys like Andrew Susak, Brock Stassi, who's helping our hitters now, yeah. Max Stassi. Um, now, you know, Tyler Ferguson coming from Vanderbilt, knowing Casey. Yeah. Lucas Giolito. Uh, Lucas Giolito. Even Lucas is in now, there. He's, he's in the gym. He's uh, around. Tyler Shiv, you know, Steve Pastora, who's sitting in here. He's in here. Uh, Nick I mean, Avila. Maza, Nick Avila. Nick Avila. These guys that Don Maza. These guys are, like, Kevin. coming out, of, coming from nowhere, you know, just hearing about, hey, my friend trained here. Hey, my buddy recommended this. Um, hey, I like what you guys are doing. I see what Aaron you guys are Aaron Shortridge is, you know. From Cal, you know, mm-hmm. he, I, I don't, I don't know where he's living, but he's definitely here, you know, Every on his day. own dime, yeah. you know, yeah. staying a train here. Kevin Gowdy from Santa Barbara that I think you, yeah. you know, you ran into down there, um, is up here staying here, you know, training here. Yeah. You know, some of these guys are gonna, you know, come out of here and get in the big league, get to the big leagues, and and that's gonna be awesome. That's just gonna you know? be, yeah. So I mean, we're impacting pro guys now. Um, we got a few. Eighth grade kids that were, you know, we're going to oh, prep yeah, for right. high school. They're going to be yeah. absolute monsters. Mm-hmm. It's just cool seeing them, you know, mature, being around the. We have a, you know, the, we got eighth graders hanging out with big, future big, big leaders big. that are going to spring training here in a couple months. And they're on the same. Taking live babies off. <laughs> right. Yeah. Taking live babies off. Making contact. Them. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it's, it's the so competitiveness cool, that we said. So. It's bred right there in the gym. And it's Honestly, crazy. to answer your question, Steve, I hope, hope to keep providing that for as long as I possibly can. Right. Oh, yeah, it's man. something that, that people love. No something doubt. Something that these kids buy into, something that parents don't mind spending their money on, and actually they're getting some value out of spending their money. Yeah. Um, I mean, I hate to knock it, but I will knock a private lesson. Like, yeah. that shit doesn't work. We're different, you know yeah, we're I mean? different like, in that sense. I totally. love people that do them, too. We got people in our building that do them that are great people, but mm-hmm. I just think for the kids, man, the kids don't learn like that. Um, and it's not a one-time thing. This is a habit that you got to build mm-hmm. to be successful. And I think just showing them that, yeah. you know, and it's not a bad thing to do it anyway, you know. Yeah. Why, I, why are you going to do something once that you want to be great at, right. you know, for 30 minutes? Yeah. you got to do that every day. It's got to be a habit. It should take you 30 minutes to warm up. <laughs> you know what I mean? It really yeah, should. It's, it's more complex, I think, I mean, as an idea. But. You know, I hate to knock what people are doing, yeah. and especially doing for a living. And no, I I, I'm not knocking them. You know, and, and here's the thing. There's all it's, kinds it, of ways. And they probably are, are, there probably is some value in, you know, what, what would a kid rather be doing? But I think there's better, there's better things out there, and I think our game is starting to prove that. Oh, and, no um, it's it's in a cool place. Yeah. I think it's evolving, and it's it, it always will be. But if we can be part of that, I want to keep being part of that. That's fun. You know? It makes so for a fun time. That's my end goal. Beautiful. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Maybe see you guys you as big say? league coaches one day. That'd be pretty <laughs> Shoot. Cool. Maybe it's Steve Fish in the big leagues. I don't know. Hey, bring it back. Yeah. Yeah. I ever you, give this a go? you want to oh, teach me that splitter, maybe. <laughs> yeah, if you get-
<laughs> Will you give me a lesson? <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, doc. What was that? Say, will you give me a private lesson? <laughs> <laughs> you can't use his price point. Fifty bucks. No, man. I, I think yeah. It's Not cheap. Including your warm up. Yeah. yeah, it's cheap. yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, we won't take up too much of your time. That's all I got hey, for man, you, man. You I'm with you all damn you day. Know, Kelly and Ron, you know what I mean? Go yeah. Ahead. He's a great cook, by the way. Yeah. Probably the best inside. I got eight tacos with me. <laughs> uh, I guess just the last question I would have would be, just looking back on your playing career, either what was the most vital part that either, like, helped you be damn successful, it. or what was one thing that either you did later that you wish you would have done earlier, or something that either now what you know, what you would have implemented back then yeah man i think that's a sick um, question great question <laughs> unbelievable question i think the biggest thing would have been would have been educating myself as a player mm. um and think and knowing that it's okay to educate yourself as a player yeah i think a lot of times players think that coaches know everything not know everything but you're supposed to listen to them that's what they're saying. sure you are you sure you are but it's okay and you should be able you should educate yourself you should know or at least have some input on your plan and how you go about your work, you know. And I think I just let people kind of dictate what I was going to do. Yeah, sure, I worked hard and everything else, but I wish I would have worked hard at knowing myself better, knowing like, hey, what would I succeed at yeah. and, and whatnot. You know, I yeah. think that's it's probably that, the number one thing. Yeah, the hierarchy we were taught originally is like, okay, coach, boom. All right, yeah. I'll do it. I mean, nowadays, mm -hmm. just with all the, as we already talked about, resources like this, you could any topic you want to learn about. You could YouTube a video on it right now. Right. Yeah. And you yeah. could dive into pitching mechanics, you could dive into exactly. what's drive on saying, what's trade athletics saying, what's automatic athletes saying. Well, and you can exactly. get peer reviewed so studies many on that. There doing a good job. Yeah, you know, they really are. And yeah. that's that's exciting, but I wish I would have dove into that a little bit more as a player. Just kind of like, hey, not let people tell me who I am. Right. Kind of like, yeah, let the, let your circle of trust tell you who you are and you know, if you got somebody that tells you something that clicks, great. Yeah. But also have your own plan in mind. Also be part, you know, take part in that. Dictate yeah. a little bit of that. In the day, you're the athlete, man. You know you. <laughs> right. That was the hard I mean, part back you. then, I'm sure. It's like, you. Yeah. You know, so I think that's one thing that I wish I would have done. Um, man, and then the one thing that I think was probably the biggest attribute was just never losing confidence that I was going to be a big leaguer. Yeah. You know, it's it wasn't arrogance. It wasn't like... Um, hey, I'm better than you, or this and that. It was like when people asked me when I was probably the earliest I remember, like 10, 11 years old, what are you going to do when you're older? They're like, I'm going to play uh, Major League Baseball. Play baseball, yeah. And, and they laugh. Did. You know, every kid says that, right? But then in high school. Every adult left. You know, <laughs> senior project, what are you going to do? Like, you know, your senior project's going to be, what, what are you going to do after high school? Um, I'm going to be a Major League Baseball player. Right. Yeah. And people might laugh, people might think that that's arrogance, but I had that inside of me. And I never let anybody take that away. Like, right. hey, you could tell me whatever you wanted. You know, you could tell me anything, but you weren't gonna, you weren't gonna waver my confidence, or you weren't gonna derail my, my thought process that, hey, I'm gonna be a big leaguer. And I think just knowing that, and knowing that you'll do anything it takes to do that, I think that was the biggest thing, man. Yeah. Knowing that, hey, I'm gonna do this. Nobody's gonna stop me. And I'll do whatever it takes. So yeah, and I'm sure that anybody sees this as coach you. I'm sure that carried right over into your oh, on yeah. field time. Yeah. Right? As soon as I, you I took them out, I'm sure you know, people yeah, knew you. I hope it did. Yeah, you I were, don't think yeah. I was always the most talented. Right. Um, I know I wasn't always the most talented. I wasn't always the biggest, right. the strongest. But I was going to get in there and make it a dog fight. Exactly. And <laughs> I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, you can yeah I think just always being ready for that. Knowing it's not going to be easy, something Andy McKay came, you know, comes and says all the time, or came up with, embrace this up. It's going to suck. <laughs> embrace this up. And just knowing that, knowing, hey, this day might suck, I might suck today, um, but I'm going to be a big leaguer at the end of it. Yeah. You know, and I think without arrogance, uh, that was that was the biggest thing that that helped me get there. Yeah, perfect. Love it, man. You got anything else? Shoot. Any questions from the audience? <laughs> The Cupcake brown, you got anything? <laughs> the camera's not on? It probably, it, it probably it turned no, off. No, it probably turned off. It just turns off at a certain time. So that's when you just edit it, though, I think. Yeah. And also, only had, had 40 something minutes of storage on there. So. Uh, but it'll be on the audio. So. Yeah. So. Fake news. We out. I don't know. We got it. Don't worry. <laughs> Ryan, thank Good you. Good job, boys. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Appreciate thank it. You guys. I'm going Appreciate to get four sun tacos. Audience, thank you.